Hello, Sander here, and today I'm going to be talking about my packer, just a review where I got it, that sort of deal. And I'm also going to be talking about DIY harnesses. I found uh, three different methods online, and I decided to just try them all out. So I'll be talking a little bit about how they're made and just kind of frankly how they work. So first things first, my packer. I got it from a site called Transwear. At first, I was a wee bit apprehensive about using this site. Uh, it just didn't seem professional. It just didn't seem too on the level when I was looking at it. But I decided that uh, it was just a good idea just to see what they had. So when I finally just looked around, I noticed that they did take PayPal, which made me feel more comfortable because I didn't want to give out my bank card information to a site that didn't seem legit. And also, they had this packer that, with shipping, it was only $13. That was perfect for my budget. I spent all my money on a binder. I had very little leftover for a packer, and I just really wanted one. And I figured $13 might as well go for it. So I went ahead. I, you know, went ahead and placed my order. And they sent me an email right off. And that email was so professional. They later would send me a tracking number for the shipping. So they really are a great company. It's just their site needs some major, major work. So as for the packer itself, they actually manufacture them there. So it took about seven to 10 days just for them to make it. So this packer was made especially for me, which I just <laughs> like the way that sounds. So um, as for the actual packer itself, which I've already said, but anyway, um, this is it. This is a Mr. Limpy right here. It is the smallest size. It is a 3.5 inch. It's not the size, it's how you use it. But uh, the price doesn't change according to size, I don't think. And uh, the color of this is vanilla since I'm one step away from looking dead, but it's very realistic. I don't know if you guys can see very well with the way this camera is. It's nice and flat in the back, and so um, it's got a really nice feel to it. This It feels very, very realistic. The skin feels really nice. I mean, it's not rough or bumpy or anything like that. It feels very natural, and it is limpy. It's very stretchy, which is good because you can put it however you need to put it. So, um, you know, the reason I went with a smaller size is that um, I didn't know how noticeable the larger sizes would be. And as creepy and weird as this is, my mom would notice. She's always looking at my outfit, trying to tell me whether or not I'm matching for the day. So she would notice if something were different. She definitely would and it would not go over well. So I, want, I just wanted one that would be the safe choice just in case. So I probably will be getting a larger one at some point or another, but it's not the size. It's how you use it. Now I'm not sure how other packers work necessarily because I've never had a different one, but this packer is high maintenance. You have to wash it every day whether or not you're you know, actually using it every day, but uh, it's because of the cyber skin that I mentioned that is so realistic. It just absorbs everything around it. So they don't even want it touching your skin. They want it, you to wear it with a condom. I know that's especially in the bedroom, but in general they said just whatever it comes in contact with it will absorb. So can't have it directly on the skin unless you have a condom, which would be very strange for a lesbian to be having condoms in the house. So can't exactly do that one. But as for the care itself, it's the usual warm water, hand soap, and then air dry, which is a problem for me because I don't want them to know that I have a packer. And just leaving it out on a drying rack would be... Yeah, that'd go over well. That would go over really, really well. You can just imagine my brother's face walking into the bathroom and suddenly there's just a penis right there staring at him. It would be hilarious. But anyway, I'm lucky that I have this this room. It's this closet kind of thing, kind of a catch-all kind of room. And um, they have these shelves in there, and I'm the only one that ever's in there anyway. And so I just put out a towel. I put the packer on top, and then I just lightly drape the washcloth. I don't pat down or anything. And move some stuff in front of it and just leave it in there to air dry and then make sure that no one finds it in there and that it does have a chance to just kind of chill out without anything getting on it and then after that it does need the dusting of cornstarch and I, I can't do a dusting well with the way that my hands are so what I do is I have a very very soft paintbrush and I just take the bristles and I just flick I don't like grind in there as if I'm putting paint on a canvas I just like lightly flick the cornstarch all around and it works really well. As for storing it, they want it to be stored only in a breathable bag. So luckily there's this marvelous invention. It's a little bag for the washing machine for bras. So when I told my mom that I needed a bag 
for the washing machine for my bras. It was not strange at all because, hey, I'm a biological female. I have bras. So now I just put my packer in there and then stash that somewhere because you can't really even see what's in there unless you really look. So that's a good way to, to hide it and just stash it someplace where it's aerated, not just like in a drawer all the time or something like that. But in short, very, very happy with it. I love it. I've named it Super Mario. Don't ask questions. <laughs> what has happened here. So now I'm going to talk about different harness methods because I just didn't have the money for a harness and I don't know when I will have money for a harness and I want to be able to wear it now. So the next things that you're going to see are you can make them at home and for a low cost. So on to the harnesses. So the first method I'm going to talk about is what I'm calling the sock method. Another YouTuber invented it and used it. I'm just repeating what he said. So all you need for this is number one, scissors. Number two, a sock, preferably a small sock or an anklet sock, something along those lines, and also these guys, safety pins. So what you do is all you need to know is how to use a pair of scissors. That's it. You take your sock, take your scissors, and you cut a hole in one side of the sock, not all the way through the sock, just like one bit. Cut a hole that is big enough to get your shaft through, but not so big that it would fall out. So just start with a small hole and keep going and put it where you want the shaft to be. So I would say somewhere up in here so that the balls have somewhere to rest. So once you've done that, you just take your packer and you just thread it. You turn this and then you thread it through the hole and you roll the sock back over it. So you start with the sock inside out, put the packer through the hole through the band, just kind of like through there, and then roll it back over the packer and your shaft will stick out. And you will have this right here. So nice and swingy, you got it in there. And once you've done that, you take your safety pins. I recommend three all along the band of the large ones. And you just safety pin it to the band of your boxers, making sure the needles are going that way and that at you. So, um, as for this method, it's great if you're in a hurry, if you're in a rush, if you don't want people to know that you're working on a harness or anything like that, and um, definitely great short-term solution for whatever it is you've got going on. However, there are issues with it. Number one that I have trouble with is this is attached to your boxers. It is not attached to you. So unless you have tight boxers, this is just doing whatever he wants to do. He's just going to be happy having himself a little time down there. So it's definitely important to wear a tight boxer with this if you want to feel it down there. Otherwise, you're just going to have this kind of rolling around slapping you all the time. Also, when it does rub up against you, this is a sock, so it's kind of itchy. It's very, very itchy. So if you're going to be wearing this for a long period of time, I would recommend doubling up having like briefs and then the boxers over top of it with this attached so that you're not getting that constant rub and scratch of the sock. Plus the sock gets really gross really fast. So that is what I recommend. I mean, this is still a great solution, but not for all the time. So if you're in a rush or just need something temporarily, do the sock method. It's good to go. On to the next one. So I'm calling this second method the ring method. So all you need for this one is a band from an old pair of boxers you've cut off, a ring. This is a 1.5 inch binder ring. It comes in a two pack at AC Moore for like $1.50. And then you will be needing a sewing kit. So all you do is you take the band, you cut it so that it's separated, and then you take the ring, you put it between the two, and then you sew either side to the ring so that you get something that looks like this right here. This is from another YouTuber um, that I found. This is his design. So again, I'm just showing actually in his video, he talks about how to sew. So that's always a great thing for those of you who don't know how, but you really don't have to know much on how to sew this. All you do once you've had this made and you make sure it's nice and strong, take your packer, you put it through the ring, one ring to rule them all, just get in there. And then when you apply pressure like that, it will stay in place, like so. And then you just wear it around your hips and you have yourself a nice quick harness that will work. It stays. So this 
keeps this in place definitely absolutely however it also causes damage to my packer my packer is super soft and sensitive and to have that pressure on it to have this just digging into it i mean i only wore it for about three to four hours and i already have a little bump in it from where the ring was so i can't use this method and also like i said i can't put this directly on my skin anyway so i'd have to double up i'd have to have boxers the harness and then boxers i can't just have it flat Plus, you really do need to be flat for this to work. If you're not completely flat down there, you're going to have yourself some problems. So, in that case, it's nice and easy, relatively quick, relatively cheap, and um, it's definitely better than the sock method. Absolutely. If your packer can handle the pressure of a ring, it's definitely the way to go. So, there's just one more method to try out. Alright, we are on our final method. Uh, this one is the boxer method. Uh, I found this from um, an article online that someone had sent me on Facebook. And so with this one, it is the hardest one that you're going to have. You have to know how to sew. That is the number one thing here. You have to know. And you have to know how to sew fairly well as well. So you just get a pair of boxers. And then you get some other sort of fabric, something soft, either jersey or I just used an old pair of boxers that I'd cut up anyway for the other method I just talked about. And what you do is you make a little pouch in the crotch of the boxers and you sew it on so that it's basically you're just making your own harness underwear basically. So um, once you have that sewed on, all you do is you put the packer inside of here and then you're good to go. However, as you can tell by my lovely job here, it's a pain in the ass. Pardon my French, but it is. Because you're sewing through the layers of this. Like you're having to sew from underneath of this, so you're not sewing the boxers together. So essentially you're, you're blind. You're sewing up and down, and I can't tell you how many times I caught the wrong part of the boxers because of how difficult it is to really to get this going on. So, I mean, I've mentioned a million times that I took costuming, so I know how to sew when I was actually pretty good at it, even though I hated it. And yet, look at these stitches on the outside. Look at how horrible these stitches are. Like, it's terrible. They're going to show through the boxers, obviously. And I just could not get this right. I worked for several hours on this and I just kept stabbing myself and sewing the boxers together in all the wrong places. And then the top is finally falling apart already because I couldn't get it on strong enough. But if you sew this on right, if you sew this to where it's super tight, it's not going to stretch and it will stay together in a washing machine. They should probably wash them in a bra bag, something gentle that way. Um, this would be perfect. This is my favorite method so far. So it's already falling apart, so it's kind of hard to show. I'm going to have to re sew this again. Great. But you got to really make sure you got room that it's the right size and the right stretch as well. So you have to make sure that you do the right everything, basically. So get it in there so that when you look, at the boxers you've got a nice little package going on however if you use stitching that is some kind of thread that is not comfortable or you stitch incorrectly you feel the stitches and it gets a little annoying you get a little itchy and I, I don't overly appreciate that very much but as long as you have these that are also super tight, you'll feel it. But these are too loose. So, again, I don't really get the sense very well of feeling that I have something down there. So, essentially, the three methods that I have tried have pretty much not worked <laughs> that well. If I had to choose one that worked the best, this is the best idea, but it is the hardest to make. Absolutely the hardest. Um, otherwise, I'd have to say the, the way to go would be the sock method. Um, if you have a softer packer, because at least you can put something on underneath of it to kind of stop the itchiness. And if you can find boxers that are tight enough, it will work until you can get a real harness. So those are the different harnesses that I have tried. And this is my packer that I have mentioned from before. So thank you very much for watching my review and my videos and we'll catch you later.